Welcome to Winning with God with William and Lisa. We are so glad that you joined us today. We have a topic out of this world for you. Today's power verse is 2 Corinthians 2.14, which says, Thanks be to God who in Christ always causes us to triumph, to win in every area of our lives. Amen. That's right, dear. Now, when you stay in the position that you're in Christ, nothing will defeat you. No situation will overtake you to as you suffer loss, because we have victory in Jesus. I want to encourage you today, whatever you're going through, put God first. Make Jesus bigger than your problem. Make Jesus bigger than your situation. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. There's nothing like Jesus. Nobody can do me like Jesus. We'll be back in about 30 seconds with a great word. Please connect with Winning with God through our website at winningwithgod.org or our Facebook page at Facebook slash Winning with God. We desire to hear about your praise reports and prayer requests. God loves you and so do we. Welcome back to Winning with God with William and Lisa. Hey man, we want to talk to you today. There's something about something that's missing out of the fabric of our society today. It may be missing out of most churches and certainly missing out of some homes. What we're going to talk to you today is giving honor to others as well as God. Giving honor to others. That's good. Baby, will you pray? Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your precious Holy Spirit who abides with us, teaches us all things. We open up our minds right now and our hearts to your word. And Father, we just thank you for this time, this visitation, that our lives will be changed. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, we, we're excited about this word today. Now, we're talking about giving honor to mm -hmm. others. But in order to establish what honor is, we must first define or establish what honor is not. So the opposite of honor is dishonor. Now here's what dishonor means. It means it is a state of shame or disgrace. It also means a failure to observe and respect. So failing to show honor not only to others, but to God brings disrespect and dishonor to God. Now, another definition that we may find interesting that, that is defined as dishonor, it means to treat as common or ordinary. Mm. So when we treat someone as common or ordinary, say Jesus, for example, then we are dishonoring him as our Lord and Savior. He is not equal to us, he is far above us. He is our King of kings and our Lord of lords. Now, if we, to sh if we were to show dishonor to others, say if we're dishonoring our boss or even someone in a higher level of authority than us, we are disrespecting them. Now, we may not have realized it at that time, but that's exactly what we're doing. Now, let's look at the word honor. What exactly does the word honor mean, you may ask? Well, it certainly means to value, to esteem highly, mm -hmm. to treat as precious, and to treat with respect. So God is calling us today, where we are right now, to not only treat him as valuable, to treat him with respect, but God is calling us to treat others within our sphere of influence, whether they be a restaurant worker, or whether they, be, whether they be a sanitation worker, or whether they're your pastor or your church leaders, or even your school administration. God is calling us to treat them with value, mm -hmm. to treat them as precious, and to treat them with respect, amen? amen. Now, there's a group of people that are listed in the word of God that God says we are not to give honor to. Proverbs 26 and one in the Amplified Bible says, honor is not fitting 
to a confident fool. Mm. So we can see right here in this passage of scripture that we are not to value or respect a fool. Now, what does the word fool mean? Well, I'm glad that you ask. In the Greek, the word fool comes from the word moros, which we get the word moron from. <laughs> Help me somebody. The word moron means brainless. It means lacking a grip on reality. So we are not to honor people who have a brain and choose not to use it. Come on and help me preach in the house today. That's right. Webster's Dictionary, honey. Webster says it defines a fool as a person who acts unwisely or imprudently. Someone who tricks or deceives others or a person who lacks good common sense and judgment is someone we should not show honor to. Now that doesn't mean that they will they will they won't ever change, but God is calling us not to treat people with that type of mentality with a sin a, with a desire of respect or we should not treat them as precious. So you and I may know with others who who lie um as the sun comes up and who lie as the sun goes down. Well, God is calling us to, to not only trust, do, don't trust these people, but these people should not receive honor. Now, let's go to another verse just for, for just a brief second. Proverbs chapter 26 and verse 8 in the New Living Bible says, Honoring a fool is foolish in itself. Hmm. So, in other words, it makes no perfect sense at all to respect, to treat a fool as precious. And we're talking about someone who refuses to live or act in a respectful manner or a respectful way. Now, we're going to get off this foolish thing. I, I see you about to turn the channel to uh, Disney Junior. But Proverbs 26 and 8 in the New Living Bible says, Honoring a rebel will backfire like a stone tied to a slingshot. Now, I want you to imagine just for a minute, I've got a slingshot in my hand and I place the stone in the slingshot and pull it back. If I'm honoring a fool, that stone that that fool is about to throw will backfire and hit me. In other words, I will become a casualty of that rebellious person, of that foolish person's actions if I honor that person. So we are taught explicitly in the word of God not to honor a fool. Well, you may ask then, well, who should I honor today? I am so glad you asked. We should be honoring church leaders, mm -hmm. teachers, and we should be honoring those who labor in the ministry. First Timothy chapter five, verse seven, in the English Standard Version says, let the elders who rule well be considered of double honor, especially those who labor in preaching and teaching. Now, when we see the word rule, you know, people say, ooh, well, I don't want anybody to, to, to dominate over me. Yeah. That's not what the word means. Mm -hmm. This is a beautiful word from the Lord. The word rule means to lead. It means, what's where we get the word ruler from? It's a straight line. So those leaders in the church who lead in a straight line from, Jesus, from you to Jesus and not from you to themselves, if they're leading you to themselves, they are not a good leader. Good. If they are, oh, I, ooh, I feel a Holy Ghost in the house. If they are leading you to Jesus, then scripture tells us in 1 Timothy that they are worthy of double honor, Amen. double respect for their labor and teaching of the gospel. Ooh, I love this That's word. Good. So if we are not respecting our leaders, if we are not giving honor to our leaders, then we are not respecting and we are not giving honor to the God who sent the leaders to us. Mm. I want to say that again. If you have a great leader, and none of us are perfect, but if you have a leader whose heart is for the Lord, then we are called today to honor our leaders. Amen. 
I know some of us have special days set aside a year where we honor our pastors or our leaders during an anniversary. And that's all good. But what about that deacon? What about that nursery worker that keeps our precious children while we're in the main sanctuary? Mm -hmm. God wants you today, I feel your Holy Spirit, to take time out of your schedule and not only pray for that leader, but sow a love offering into them. You can go down to a store like Bed Bath & Beyond or Bath & Body Works and get a little gift card. Mm -hmm. But let that teacher, that daycare worker, that leader know how special they are. Now, don't go get bed and bath body for a man, okay? You know, find something mannish for the guy, but whatever, you know. <laughs> he may like cologne or something like that. But let's show honor to our leaders, amen? Amen, that's good. First Thessalonians chapter 5. You can tell I'm a little bit excited about this. Baby, First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 12 and 13. In the New Living Translation, Paul is talking here. He says, Dear brothers and sisters, So we know immediately that Paul is talking to the church, Mm -hmm. the believers. Dear brothers and sisters, honor those who are your leaders in the Lord's work. They work hard among you Mm -hmm. and give and and uh, they work hard among you and give you spiritual guidance. Show them great respect and wholehearted love because of their work and live peaceably with each other. So we can see right here in 1 Thessalonians that the Lord is telling telling us through the Apostle Paul that those who work hard in the faith, they may be witnessing. Mm -hmm. They may be the the lady or the gentleman that, that, that keeps the sanctuary clean. The bearers of the word who preach the word They're up studying long when you're in bed and they're burning the midnight oil, so to speak, hearing from the Lord. Mm -hmm. We should be showing great honor and great respect for them. We should be treating our leaders as valuable. Amen. Amen. That's good because a lot of times we forget the, the, all the toil and things that they put into the work that they do. And it's not easy sometimes when you're in the ministry and we do that. We have to honor those that God uh, entrusts us with, you know, that's over us. We definitely do that because that's honoring God in the end. Amen. Amen. Now, now we're not called to worship man. Let me throw this little disclaimer out here. What God is not saying is God is not saying that you should worship your pastor or any man. We're only called to worship Jesus, worship Father and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. But we are called today to give our pastors, our leaders honor. We're called to treat them as precious and valuable Mm -hmm. because they are. If they're delivering the word of God, they are valuable to us. Amen. They are. Not everyone out there is preaching the word of God. Not everyone out there is honoring the Lord in their living and in their giving. Mm -hmm. But those who sacrifice, who diligently work for the Lord, like our pastors, are worthy of honor and respect. Amen. Now, next let's talk about honoring our school teachers, police officers, city and county officials. Romans chapter 13 and verse 7 in the Message Bible simply says, honor your leaders. Now, when we look at it in the New Living Bible, I love this. It says, give respect and honor to those who are in authority. Mm -hmm. Now, I've got a little nugget of truth for the young people that are under the age of 90. If you want respect, you have to first give respect. Amen. Say it again. If you want respect, Mm -hmm. you must have to first give respect. Respect cannot and will not ever be demanded. Respect is always earned. So if you want law enforcement to respect you, Mm -hmm. you must first give respect to law enforcement officers. Mm -hmm. If you want your school teachers to respect you, you must walk in the class and show respect to your teachers. Respect is always earned. It is never granted because it is demanded. Now, 
This may go against everything that you may have heard in the media in the last nine to 10 years plus. We see a lot of people showing disrespect to those who are in authority, specifically right now in this season, police officers, judges, and law enforcement officers. Now, you may not be able to always respect that person. Certainly, you know, we look in Proverbs chapter 26 and verse 1, it tells us that we're not to respect a fool or a, a foolish person. Mm -hmm. But you can still respect the office or position that that person holds. That's right. Now, let me give you a great example that's not even in my notes. Downloaded from the Holy Spirit, sir, we bless you. Let me, let me, let me give you a great example. You may be speeding on I-40 East or westbound. Uh -oh. Somebody help me, Jesus. And a police officer pulls you over. And you roll down the windows, you put your car in park. And let's give you two scenarios. It's beautiful. First scenario, the police officer is polite. So you're polite. Folks, police officer is respectful, still yet doing his or her job. And you're respectful as well. You exchange information. He or she writes you a citation and you're on your way. Example number two, you get stopped on whatever major highway that, that runs through your state or your county, and immediately the police officer comes to your window with an attitude. Come on, somebody. <laughs> you have no right to still go there with that officer if she or he is not polite or respectful to you. You can't act up. You can't cut a fool like the old folks used to say. You still have to, you may not be able to respect that officer for what he or she said mm -hmm. or how he or she said it, but you still need to respect the position that that officer holds. I, I, I'm getting some resentment here, so some feedback, but I'm okay with that. We still must respect the authority figure in our communities whether we like it or not. Mm -hmm. Somebody say Amen. praise the Lord in Amen. the house. Praise the Lord. Now I'm kind of amazed at times, baby. I'm kind of kind of caught off guard. We've got a generation that is in communities scattered around the United States and even the world who have no disrespect for law enforcement officers. No respect. We we see law enforcement officers That's under constant attack. Mm -hmm. Physically Talk and verbally. It. Talk about it. And you think that they're the enemy. Yet, when someone is after you, mm. when your privacy rights have been violated, you quickly pick up the phone, call, dial 911, and call for a uniformed officer to come and help you. Our uniformed officers, and there are 1.1 million officers in the United States, keeping us safe. They are not the bad guys. That's right. We must give them respect and honor. Now, I want to challenge about 30,000 of you that are not stingy. Come on, somebody. Are you one of the 30,000? I want to challenge you. The next time you see an officer eating in a restaurant, pick up his or her tab. That's good. Do it anonymously. Yes. But pick up her tab or her mm -hmm. his tab. Mm -hmm. Let them know how much you appreciate them. Yes. When Lisa and I are at in public, and if the if the opportunity presents itself, I will go to that officer or that armed services, uh, he or she a, a soldier, mm -hmm. and say thank you for your service. That's right. Our police officers are a thin blue line between the good people and the bad people. Mm -hmm. So let's stop demonizing and victimizing that's our good. officers and respect and, off and honor our officers, amen? Amen, that's good. You have something on that, baby? Well, I just think that's awesome that you brought that out because we do have that in this culture where the uh, officers and the law enforcement people are just totally dishonored. And, and also, even I wanna bring out, you know, there was a time where we lived in where uh, if an older person was coming down the street, if you will, you know, we would move out of the way for honor for them. But now we live in a day where if that were to happen, now we see the older people moving out of the way of the younger people yeah. for fear. You know, no respect. 
And that's just totally, totally dishonor. And, and that's not what we want. We have to get back to honoring the older, wiser people, the law enforcement people. And like you said, say thank you. Say thank you for your service because God ordained them to be here to protect us. And so we honor them. We, just a simple thank you is, is, is all that it's needed. Amen. Amen. Now, now, now before we go, and, and, and time's about to wrap up, and this is good stuff, I'm going to buy the, the, the DVD for this one for me. <laughs> Let's talk about honoring our mother and our father. Okay. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 12, it's part of the Ten Commandments, not mm -hmm. the Ten Suggestions. In the New Living Bible says, honor your father and your mother, then you will have a long, full life. Now, if we look at the opposite of that, I guess it would say that if we dishonor or disrespect our mother and father, if we don't treat them as precious, then our lives could be possibly cut short. Amen, that's right. In other words, if we refuse to honor our godly mother and our godly father, it comes with ramifications that we will not be able to control or stop. Now, let's move on to Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. English Standard Version. God commands us again to honor our mother and our father. You may say, I don't want to hear that. Well, that's not my problem. That's yours between you and him. This is what he's wanting us to do. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 23, English Standard Bible. Honor your mother and father. This is the first commandment with promise that it may go well with you, that you may live a long life in the Lord. Now I hear what some of you are saying right now. I have a mean father. I have a disrespectful mother. Matter of fact, when my mother goes to work on Monday mornings, she doesn't drive a car, she rides a broom. My mother's just that bad. <laughs> well, your mother may be. But you can still honor your mother in the fact that she did not abort you Amen. That's to right. the murderous abortion doctors in the land. Amen. You can still find a way to respect your mother even if you don't agree with her. But like we talked about early in Proverbs 26 and verse 1, we are not to give honor to a person who is foolish. But I want to challenge some of you today. You may be estranged from your mother from your father. I want to challenge you in the next 30 days to write a letter to your mother. Write a letter to your father. Let them know that you still love them and that you still honor them as your mother Amen. and as your father in your life. Now that's a word for somebody and that's a yes. real good word. Now you may not get a response, but God will bless you for your willingness to honor your mother and your father. Amen? Amen. Now, now, baby, you and I both know this, uh, that parenting is not perfect. Right. It is not without fault. Right. But yet and still, <laughs> the reason I'm laughing is because when I was coming up in the world, I thought my mother and father were the meanest ones ever. But when I got out on my own, I realized they knew they knew what they were talking about. Mm -hmm. So it, it's important for us to to recognize as parents that uh, it is beneficial that we honor not only our children, and we're going to talk about it later, honoring our spouse. We won't do it right now, but honoring those who were in authority over us, but honoring those who are not over us as well. Mm -hmm. Now, baby, we got to stop this. We're going to pick this up during the next broadcast. But I want my, my sweet, beautiful, talented, anointed wife. Did I leave out anything? She gives me little cue cards, like text messages. I want, her, I want her to pray as the Spirit leads you to pray this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Father, we just come to you right now thanking you for your word, thanking you for your ways, thanking you for your will. Now, Father, help us in these last days. Help us to honor you with everything that we have. You are our life source. Father, there's people out there who are hurting, people out there who don't know things that you want them to know. So I ask you to bless the people. I'll ask you to bless us. I ask you to bless our nation, God. 
We honor you with fruit from our lips. Let the meditation of our hearts, God, be pleasing unto you. And we just pray, Lord, that the Spirit just fall down fresh. Give us a fresh anointing. Give us a fresh wisdom and insight, Lord, in these last days to bring your will down to us in this earth because we need it, Father. And we thank you for this precious time right now. Bless the viewers. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And, and, and I just heard something in the Spirit, and, and I want to release this. Uh, the Bible says give honor where honor is due. And I want you, uh, Christian Television Network viewers and partners, I want you to pray about sticking a letter in the mail and showing honor to Bob and Jane DeAndre. I, I don't think it would really hurt to, to send them a little note of appreciation and let them know yes. how much you respect them and honor them. And here's the reason why we're saying this. They haven't diluted the Word of God. They're still pressing toward the prize of eternal life. And they sacrifice much so that we can enjoy Christian television network. Yes, they're the founders. So I want you to honor Bob and Jane, if you will, and we're going to do that as well. And, and shh, don't, don't tell them we're going to do it. But I want you to, to send them a thank you letter, a yes. thank you note, or a thank you card, or even an email, and yes. letting them know, hey, Bob, hey, Jane, we love you, and we're praying for you. Thank you and we honor you today. Now, before we get going here, and I want you to know that God loves you and so do we, I want you to honor your, your law enforcement officers. Yes. The next time you see a police officer, mm -hmm. a firefighter, EMT, mm -hmm. I want you to shake their hand and say, sir, thank you for protecting us. Mm -hmm. Ma'am, thank you for being there and answering the call because few, were, few answer the call. Many are called, but few were chosen. Mm -hmm. And that's including in law enforcement. I'll tell you what, I want to leave you with this. Always remember that if you want respect, you must first give respect. If you want respect, oh, I hear this, then you need to dress and act in a respectful manner. Mm -hmm. And always remember that respect is not demanded, but respect is earned. Well, I don't know about you. This is good. This is good stuff. But this one has blessed me. Mm -hmm. Now, every word that God gives me blesses me. Yes. But this one right here, Lord Jesus, it's hard to sleep at night when you know that when you respect God, God will respect you. Amen. We've got to run. We love you. Yes. Jesus loves you more. And we'll see you real soon on Winning with God. We want to thank you for your support of this ministry in the past, and we want to encourage you to continue to part with, partner with us going forward. There are many ways that you can partner, but we want to ask you to seek God with respect to what he would have you give or sow into this ministry to help us continue to take the gospel to the world. As Paul said to the church at Philippi, it is not the gift that we seek, but it's the fruit that abounds to your account. Know that the seed you sow is a long seed and will continue to produce for you in the years to come. Thank you.